Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts and today we are talking about the Germans in the mid-1940s yet again. The name yes. that is plastered on the screen that I refuse to say um, is having reasons. ramifications in the modern day. 85 years later, uh, the story is of a painting by Camille Pissarro called Rue Saint Honore in the afternoon effect of rain which is pictured here in the article and said artwork was um taken by the germans in the 1940s and uh there's been a legal battle that has been persisting ever since or at least in the modern day yeah so what happened was in 1939 a jewish family was forced to flee germany uh in order to not die Pretty and good reason. In so in so doing, they were forced to give up all their assets to members of a certain mustachioed man's political party. Uh, Who had an affection for collecting artwork and historical relics, and a ton of which is still yet to be found, by the way, including yeah. the Amber Room. In, yeah. In so doing, they were not properly paid for it, uh, as they were never allowed to access the account in which the payment was made. But, sir, uh, we paid for the artwork. We yeah. didn't even get the money. <laughs> Not their problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, some, uh, some years later, uh, the German government, uh, after having been restored uh, following uh, the Cold War, <laughs> uh, paid out the price of the artwork at the time to the family. Uh, the descendants of this individual who had to flee uh, Germany. Um, they did that on the grounds that it was believed that the Germans during World War II had destroyed the artwork. Again, this, see the missing artwork of the Amber Room among a ton of other stolen possessions. Yeah, it, it was it was believed that the Germans destroyed it rather than relinquish it. So uh, they were paid out compensation. You, Q, uh, the 21st century, it is discovered that the art was not destroyed, but has been, in fact, sitting in a Spanish museum. Uh, this, of course, leads to a lawsuit uh, from the descendants of the person from whom it was sold uh, in an effort to get it back. Which, um, the... The painting in question changed hand a number of times, which ended up being purchased by a Spanish noble with a very Spanish name of Baron Hans Heinrich Thyssen Bonomizia, whose art collection is now a part of the state-backed Spanish nonprofit named after him. So yeah, a very, very Spanish name. A very must have been from the Austrian side. Yeah, yeah. or Argentina maybe. Yeah, very well. Uh... Uh, I, can't, I can't remember who was in charge of Spain during World War II. Uh, Franco. Uh, yeah, yeah, from the Franken side. So yeah. what you what you so the former so let's see a former fascist country uh, sold some artwork to another foreign fascist country at the time and has now decided to keep well, the artwork that was thought to have been destroyed but has later been found out well, to I exist. Know. I don't think it was sold. I think what happened was a member of one fascist country immigrated to another fascist country and then donated his artwork to a, you know, to a museum in said country. Or his ancestors did, or his descendants did, quote unquote. His but yes, artwork. A, a piece of artwork that was taken uh, yep. by the by the Germans in the 1940s ended up in Spain through whatever reason. And... Yeah. The descendants of um, Lily Neubauer ended up requesting the painting back upon realization that the painting still existed, which the U.S. Court of Restitutions, after the war, had deemed was still part of her possession. That, yeah. that uh, Neubauer remained the owner of the painting, which leads to today where the lawsuit takes in. In 2000, one of Neubauer's descendants, a California resident found the painting on display and requested it back and then decided to sue, which in um, April of 2022, the United States Supreme Court 
made a judgment on it, which is yeah. incredible. Yeah. So the U.S. Supreme Court uh, took the case, and they sent it... What they did is they, they reopened the case and sent it to the California 9th U.S. Circuit of Appeals, which was the court in which it had been ruled on prior to it being bumped up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and the issue at stake is whose laws are in effect right now? Is it the laws of the nation of Spain? Or is it the laws of the state of California? And that's the big issue, because if it is the laws of the nation of Spain, then by having quote, legally acquired the artwork from its previous owner, then the museum has full rights to it. However, if you go by the laws of California and the United States, the Neubauer family remains the legal owner of the painting and is thus entitled to uh, the artwork. And the Ninth Circuit Court in California has ruled that it is the laws of the nation in which the art exists rather than the laws of the nation in which the people live that are at play. And, and thus, Spain has claimed. It's also important, too, to look at where the lawsuit was filed. They filed it in California, where California has laws in place that would have uh, relinquished it back versus them applying the court case in Spain where the actual painting lives and spain doesn't currently have any laws in place that would dictate any sort of repatriation or restitution in place and spain basically lives on that point they rested their laurels and um parts of uh the museum welcomed it and they stated that neither the nonprofit nor um the very spanish named uh gentleman who owned the collection knew that the painting was stolen when they bought it. And I assume that might be because the person who sold it to him went, we purchased it. We gave them money for it. And and the thing also, too, is that the family uh, suing says that neither the museum nor the private collector who donated it to the museum uh, did any due diligence uh, to find out that the date and time of purchase was the middle of World War II in Germany, which in it, which in any art collecting standpoint raises numerous red flags simply because of what was going on at the time. And the people, the descendants, the Kassiriers, believe that, especially in light of the explosion of anti-Semitism uh, in the country and around the world, that they should challenge this. And this is actually a pretty poignant point that they're making in that in the post-World War II world, not a whole lot of effort was put into place into restoring a lot of what had been taken and damaged and destroyed. And part of this had to do with, uh, obviously, the restitution from World War One and scars of that, but it also just fell really low on the priority list and things like this got away where... Countries are getting away with spoils of war from a disenfranchised people. I'm looking at you, and, and the, Switzerland. Yeah, and and the uh, the key the, the key thing too is like you know we mentioned earlier that there was a restitution from the German government to this family regarding the destruction of the painting. That restitution was the equivalent of two hundred fifty U.S. dollar uh, two hundred fifty thousand U.S. dollars today. Um, the painting has an estimated value of 30 million U.S. dollars today. So mm -hmm. there is there, there is no, well, you didn't get the painting back, you didn't get your heritage back, but you finally received monetary compensation for it. No, they received pennies on the dollar. They didn't yeah. even receive pennies on the Yeah. They didn't even receive a penny for a dollar because a penny for a dollar would be 300,000. They received less than that. Even though they just really didn't get anything. Yeah, Come so the, the family just ended up getting ripped off, but hey, I think that's a good point for us to wrap up here, because there's not a whole lot we can really say without starting to just ramble on. It's just an example of how the system continues to affect people later on, and some people may look at this as a cash grab given the value, but there is a valid point in here in that it was stolen. 
Yeah, and the 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 judge uh, really does define it that it is legally the correct decision, but it is also completely immoral. And this is you know the example of an immoral legality uh, happening where it's Whoa. everything is perfectly legal, but you have no conscience to have done it. Yeah, you mean that laws are not always moral and justified. And on that terrible bombshell, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.